Hello again, I'm Ian Masters. This is Background Briefing, an Easter Sunday special where we're talking about the state of both Protestantism and Catholicism in this country and in the world. Let's now turn to the subject of Catholicism. I'm speaking with James Carroll, who's a former priest who has been a civil rights worker, an anti-war activist, and a community organizer in Washington and in New York. He served as Catholic chaplain at Boston University from 1969 to 1974 and then left the priesthood to become a writer. He was named best columnist by the Catholic Press Association and received the first Thomas Merton Award. He is currently a columnist for the Boston Globe and his books include House of War, The Pentagon and the Disastrous Rise of American Power, An American Requiem, God, My Father and the War that Came Between Us, and his latest, Practicing Catholic. His New York Times bestseller, Constantine's Sword, is now a subject of an acclaimed documentary directed by Oren Jacoby and distributed nationally by First Run Features. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, James Carroll, here on, on Easter Sunday. And we're sort of doing a, a program on religion, Christianity, on Easter Sunday, having spoken with a prominent Protestant whose father was the founder, in, in many ways, of the religious right. I'm now turning to you uh, to get a sense of where the Catholic Church stands now. And, of course, the constant drip-drip of scandal perhaps has fed into a kind of anti-Catholic uh, sentiment. What do you think the Church can do to get ahead of this seemingly endless uh, stream of scandal? Well, the, the current Catholic scandal is an epiphany, a revelation of something uh, deeply wrong with the clerical structure of the Church. And my expectation is that the consequence of this uh, sort of tsunami of scandals, really, um, will be a, uh, finally a uh, large reckoning with uh, the reforms uh, of the clerical structure of the Church that actually were begun uh, during the Second Vatican Council in the 1960s. Uh, but there was a fundamentalist reaction uh, against uh, the reforms of the Second Vatican Council. Uh, we're familiar with Protestant fundamentalism, but there's a Catholic fundamentalism, only instead of uh, treating the verses of the Bible literally, Catholic fundamentalism uh, has a disproportionate uh, regard for the statements of the Pope. And what we have here is a revelation of the... Uh, limits, if you will, uh, and even the corruptions of uh, the pyramid of Pope-centered Catholicism. Uh, so in the long run, uh, the Church is going to have been uh, purified by this terrible scandal. Uh, meanwhile, uh, many, many, many individuals have been deeply wounded by it. Well, many uh, people have made analogies with the uh, minority on the Supreme Court who happen to be Catholic in terms of the ultra-conservatives and the direction they're taking the court and will take the court if they get a majority and uh, what's happened in the Vatican. And you just alluded to Vatican II. Can you take yes. us back to that point where uh, the short-lived Pope tried to instigate a lot of reforms and then there seemed well, to... It, you have to go back, actually, to the 19th century, which is when this uh, obsession with papal power uh, began to take hold in the Catholic Church. It was when the Pope lost his temporal power over the papal states uh, in the middle of Italy uh, in 1870 that the bishops rallied round the Pope and uh, gave him ultimate spiritual power. It was only then, for example, that uh, in that council, Vatican I, the infallibility of the Pope was declared to be a doctrine of the Church. Uh, many Catholics think that's uh, an ancient tradition. It is not. It's a modern tradition. And since 1870, uh, the Pope accrued more and more power to the centralized organization of the Vatican. Um, that system was uh, a corruption of the Christian tradition, because suddenly the Pope loomed larger in the imagination of Catholics than Jesus Christ did. And uh, the image of uh, authority that Jesus offered was uh, a authority of service, not power. And it was a pope who saw that the Church had gone off track. That was John the Twenty Third, which is why he called the Second Vatican Council to correct some of the excesses uh, that had followed in the wake of the First Vatican Council. So 
Vatican II, John's, Pope John's Council, was a step toward the democratizing of the Church, a collegiality among bishops, with the Pope understood to be the first among equals, but emphasized equals, uh, an, uh, an affirmation of the tradition of the priesthood of all believers, to put the power of the Church back where it belongs among laity, uh, priests and nuns, sharing uh, with bishops in the uh, leadership of the Church, and so forth. Well, the, the changes of Vatican II were profound, and uh, they frightened uh, the conservative wing of the Catholic Church, and that wing has been uh, trying to roll back Vatican II since then. Uh, Cardinal Ratzinger was the chief uh, uh, of the people trying to roll back Vatican II. You could call him the Catholic fundamentalist in chief, and now he's the Pope. And, of course, what this all boils down to is that whenever a bishop was confronted with the choice between defending an abused child or protecting the abusive priest, the bishops inevitably chose to protect the priest, not because they approved of his behavior or were indifferent to it, but because that was the way to protect this system of power. And that is what is over now. And what needs to happen now, we had an example of it only two weeks ago when the American Catholic nuns openly defied the Rome-obsessed Catholic bishops of America when the nuns supported President Obama's health reform bill. The nuns broke ranks with the bishops, but the nuns were acting as if the reforms of Vatican II are real, and that's what has to happen more now. Priests and lay people have to break ranks with this uh, corrupt clerical system also. And uh, more and more and more, I think you can expect that it will be happening. The Catholic Church has to be rescued from Catholic fundamentalism.